In today's video, I'll show you guys exactly how you can get to grips with Meta's new AI. So without further ado, let's get started. One of the first things you can do with Meta AI is you can simply ask it any question and it's going to respond to you rather quickly. So for example, let's say I choose this one from the drop down menu of option choices. It's going to immediately generate the text within seconds. Now here, this is like your typical ChatGPT user interface. There's not really much you can do with this. Of course, you can go back and forth with the chat model to have a normal conversation. And currently, in its current form, there isn't really a way for you to pick different models to talk to. This is all based on the Llama 4 architecture. Now, if you are having a conversation, and let's say you've managed to find out something really interesting, one of the key features of Meta's platform is the fact that they like to share things. So in the top right, if you click the share feature, you'll see right here that it's going to show you the exact post that you're going to make. So basically it will have your chat, what you put in first, and then of course you'll see it will have the conversation. What you can do if you want to actually share this, just hit the pencil icon, then we can just hit control A backspace. And then after that, we can say Meta's call stress management techniques. So now if we click post, now we've actually posted something to the social feed. So now you can see right here on the discover feed, this is what I've posted. So if I want to check right here, you can see now that it opens up a different array of options. You can see now it has different comments here. So that means people can comment. You can see it has different likes. And one of the interesting things here is that this is available to everyone. So if I click the top left, you can see that now I can see I've just posted something. I've posted Meta's cool stress management techniques. And this is something that I can share with the wider community. Of course, like I said before, people can leave comments on this. So for example, if you click the comment button and you want to leave a comment, you can put this is so cool. But of course, this is already my post, so I wouldn't need to do that. But you can see right here, these are different posts that are going to be from different people. Now, what you can also do is when you find different posts, you can click the remix button, which is basically going to instantly use this prompt and open up a new chat window. So if I click the remix button, since this is my own chat, you're going to see here, it just gives me the prompt and I can immediately put that inwards. So let me show you guys how to actually use that with the discover feature. So if we click the top left, we can now go and discover anyone else's AI experiences. So if we scroll around, we're about to see exactly what other people have been creating. So the majority of these are going to be images, but some of them like these are going to be text-based ones. And even some of them are going to be videos. So basically this feed is allowing you to engage in other AI generated content. So let's say for example, I see something really cool. Imagine Mario and Super Luigi as elderly men in a retirement community. What I can do here is I can now click remix that and after clicking remix that, it's not even going to give you an option. It's immediately going to generate those pictures. So in around, you know, 10 to 20 seconds, it should give you a response. But I'm guessing that it didn't give us a response there because maybe that image might have been copyrighted. Let's try that again with a different prompt. Right here, this is a bouquet of flowers. So if we click remix, this one should actually work. And just like that, we got ourselves an image generation. Now, this is really cool because anytime we generate an image, it does give us four types of images, which are really, really nice. I'm not sure what vision model they're using, but it allows us to generate images for completely free. The only downside to Meta's generated images is that in the bottom right hand corner, you will notice that there will be an icon that is essentially a watermark. So, so understand if you choose to publish these on social media and you don't like watermarks, you're going to have to use a third party service to remove those watermarks. As even after I've exported the image, you can still see that the watermark is still there and it says Meta AI. Now, if we're still looking at the discover feature, once again, we can go ahead and interact with other people's pieces of content. So if we click this post, of course I can comment wow so cool and then you can see that that comment is now public of course once again i can leave a like on this and now i've successfully interacted with other people if one if i if i would like to do so i could also click this person's profile and i can see their other creations here you can see they've only created one thing but this is the guise of the social feed now let's take a look at meta's imagine feature so let's say, for example, I wanted to imagine a picture of something really cool. You can see right here that I have put in my prompt. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the imagine button. And basically, this now is going to allow me to create an image. So if I click generate in a few seconds, it's going to generate me any image. So now you can see immediately I've got several images to choose from and to play with. Once again, after this image has been generated, it's only now that I can then change the aspect ratio. Currently, it is in a one to one format. They've done this because that is the default format for posting to Instagram. But of course, you can change the aspect ratio to let's say you want it to be a wallpaper for your phone. 
I could change the aspect ratio to even a wallpaper for my desktop. And then I could click generate again, and it's going to generate me even more images. You can see right here that it's managed to generate several images that are now in this format. Now, one thing that's really nice about Meta AI is their Visual Studio. You can see here that they have many different styles that you can immediately apply to your images. So let's say, for example, you wanted this to be in, let's say, a felt style. You could immediately click this one right here, and you could immediately apply that texture to this image. So let's say we click that it's going to immediately go ahead and now do that with that image. Now you have to know it isn't directly taking the last image that you had and then putting it in a felt style file. It's creating a new complete image. And then of course it's generating that from scratch. So it won't perfectly capture the subject image. It's going to create a completely new one from scratch. So if I now want to go ahead and change it into maybe even a doodle style, I can then mess around with these different styles and see which different ones I like. You can see right here that after applying the doodle style, it just takes the initial prompt and applies it in a different style. Now you can also see exactly how the prompts are constructed. So if you want extra control, if you click this button right here, you can see what these illustrated styles are. So if you click the small paragraph icon on these things, you can actually see the key details of where these prompts have come from. So if you don't like the output images, of course you can change these. Now, something really cool as well is they do have different moods. So you can see right here, you've got different moods. You also have different lightings. So there are different lighting styles. And also you can see that there are different color styles as well. So this is something that allows for real creativity. So for example, maybe I want a cyberpunk style. And you can see right here that is now combining two styles. So it isn't just combining the doodle style. It's going to combine the doodle and the cyberpunk style in a 16 by 19. So now what I can also do is if I really want to animate this, I can literally just click this button right here to click animate. And now it's going to turn this into a video. Now, honestly, this doesn't give you the best control over how these videos are generated. The videos aren't the best of resolution and they are quite still depending on what you ask for. If you actually want to generate good videos, it's probably best to open up a new chat conversation and then it's best to actually ask it for a video in that single prompt. So now what I would do is I would say do I would say create a video of a Porsche cruising down a nice country road. So here you can see I've said create a video and that way it's actually going to create me a video almost immediately. And so right here you can see it just uses one image and then of course creates one video. So this is where you can get a little bit more control over your kind of video. Of course, the video generation model isn't that great, but if you do want more control, this is what I would suggest doing. Now, another really cool thing is that they have this canvas feature, and this is basically like Microsoft Word, but with AI built in. So what you wanna do is you just wanna click this canvas feature, and you can already see that it is adding some sub prompts that are much more detailed than the average ones. So for example, what I will do here is I will put, help me write a business plan for a startup, and you can see it's going to immediately begin writing and offering different solutions to my problem. It's going to open up this extra window that essentially allows you to have much more context and much more tokens in the final output. Now you do have to wait before you can edit this. You do have to wait like a few seconds. And then now with this, what we can do is we can essentially edit this. So what's really cool about this is that it allows you to edit on the fly. So for example, let's say we quickly want to do add a cover image. We can quickly just one click and add the cover image. In a few seconds, we're going to get an image that represents whatever the document is about. Of course, you can see this business is called EcoCycle. So it's now going to generate an image right there. Once again, if you don't like that image, you can once again edit that. You can change the prompt and you can make it a little bit better. We've already gone through the images, but of course, that's what you can do. Now, let's say, for example, right here, this is the company, the strategic partners. Let's say you want them to expand on this area. Just highlight this and then we can ask Meta AI, expand on this. And now that we said expand on this, if we click enter, it's now going to expand on this area. And I can see it's actually going to think and it's going to write about many different you know, areas. You can see it's going to give this updated version and I can just click replace. And you can see now it actually replaced that entire area. So it's given me an entirely new area. Now, of course, I will actually have to change this because unfortunately it inputs the entire prompt. So let me just delete the prompt area. And now you can see it just has the correct text right there. So if you want to quickly make changes, just highlight this and then of course ask meta.ai. Now, of course, as well, if you want to quickly add images into this to make this a more, you know, visually appealing document, you can do that. So for example, what you can do is you can, let's say you want to highlight the suppliers area, then we can click imagine and it's going to quickly generate four images for you. So just wait a few moments. And then now you can see it's given us some super, super basic images and I can just literally insert one right there 
and I can continue to do this that makes this document, you know, a little bit more interesting to read. So for potential customers, I can once again highlight this. Let's say God's gardening and landscaping professionals, I can quickly click imagine. And this one click workflow allows you to move a lot more efficiently than many other websites. So you can see right there, I've got my images and I can just literally just insert those images right underneath there. Now, of course, if you do want this entire thing to be rewritten, you can click this button right here that says make it formal, make it casual, make it shorter, make it longer, simplify. Simplify is actually a really good one. So I'm gonna click simplify. And now what it's going to do is it's going to simplify the entire document. So it's going to make, make things more concise. It's going to simplify the hard details and it's just going to explain it in a way that makes it easy to understand. So you can either use the quick buttons in this first page here, or what you can do is you can actually go on the right hand side and you can make custom requests. So let's say, for example, I wanted to make my own custom request that said, okay, make this document all about a company called EcoStream and reference that name multiple times. This is going to be something that, you know, maybe I wanted to do because my company is called EcoStream. And of course, since I want this to be custom, let's just put this into the chat window. And now it's actually going to go through the document and it's going to call it EcoStream. So now once again, I actually had to input that prompt twice, but I would say be very specific about what you want replaced. So I said, instead of calling it EcoCycle, call it EcoStream, and it goes through the document and replaces any pieces of text that did have the previous text on it. So overall, you can see right here that this is a comprehensive way to quickly generate images. If you don't like any of the images that were generated, you can always quickly just click a regenerate button. Let's say for example, right here, I can just click the regenerate and it's gonna give me a new image almost immediately. And maybe I do like that style a bit better. I'll definitely say though, that if you do have one document, definitely go to edit. And then if you want a specific style, it's probably gonna be best to keep that one style. So for example, maybe I wanna keep this one illustrated because having a consistent style throughout your documents definitely just, you know, makes it look a little bit more better. So if I use that image, that's gonna be a little bit more better. And then we can go back and then we can just click off this and then we have the final image there. So overall, that is the summary from Meta's AI. It is really comprehensive in what you can do. In the future, there will likely be more use cases, but for now, this is a quick starter guide on how you can use the platform.